Scottish Rite Freemasonry has its own headquarters at the 33rd degree in Edinburgh. The United Grand Lodge of England has tried to deny that the true god of masonry is Yabulon, or has anything to do with the devil. But Albert Pike describes Yabulon as a symbol of the infinite and internal Godhead, a mongrel word whose name has been for 2,000 years an appellation of the devil. On the 14th of July, 1889, Albert Pike issued these instructions to 23 Scottish Rite Supreme Councils throughout the world. We worship a God, but it is the God that one adores without superstition. To you, Sovereign Grand Inspectors General, we say this, that you may repeat it to the brethren of the 30th, 31st, and 32nd degrees. The Masonic religion should be the Luciferian doctrine. Lucifer is God. The true and pure philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer. So, Yabulon is really an alternative name for the devil. The last syllable, On, is a code name for the ancient Egyptian god Osiris, who was the god of the dead. There can be no doubt that the Scottish Rite form of Freemasonry in America and Britain is controlled by high-ranking 33rd degree Masons who worship Satan or Lucifer as their god. We're talking about occultic forces, uh, we're talking about the five-pointed pentagram which was used by satanic worshippers for thousands of years. If you take the five points off of a five-pointed star or a pentagram, you have left in the middle a pentagon. The pentagon is directed toward the North Star because according to the ancient Babylonians, that's where you, ga you gathered power from the gods of the North in war. <laughs> The British royal family recently suffered intense embarrassment when it was revealed that the father of the Duchess of Kent was an SS officer. To be a member of Hitler's SS, families had to be pure Aryan, with their German ancestry clearly traceable to the Teutonic Knights of medieval Germany. Like most of the British royal family, the Duchess of Kent is descended from German blood. Her German ancestors have throughout history been members of the Illuminati Secret Society Network. The British royal family's name is not Windsor. Their real family name is actually Saxa Coburg Gotha. In his book, The Forgotten Monarchy of Scotland, His Royal Highness Prince Michael of Albany publishes ancient heraldic documents which expose the true lineage of the British royals. Ancient heraldic documents suggest that the British royal family's lineage comes from ancient Hebrew or Jewish tribes of the Old Testament. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, she referred to England as Israel 
or Jerusalem. Uh, according to the Masonic reference works that you can get in any library, the, uh, <clears throat> the Freemasonic orders of Europe said that there was a little ideologue, a little spiritual entity that gave the knowledge to what the Masons call our hidden masters. That's what Freemasonry re refers to those who lead world Freemasonry. They don't know who they are. No, no Freemason knows who the, the actual leaders of the world organization are. They call them our hidden masters. Well, according to the reference works, there is a little spiritual entity that, that guides the world Freemasonry, and they call him Yoda. And in, the, and in the reference works, you'll see this little creature with the, with the pointed ears, and he's called Yoda. Yota goes back to Judah, or Judah, which goes back into British Israel World Freemasonry, going back to the time of, uh, of the founding of England, and that's why they're today called British. The British, it's a very big difference between being English and British. Brit is Hebrew for contract or covenant, and ish means man in Hebrew. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, her personal spy, Mr. John Dee, was responsible for establishing the British Secret Service. John Dee was a magician and member of an alchemical secret order. He is thought to be the author of the ancient Voynich Manuscript, which is now owned by Yale University, and is kept under lock and key just a few yards away from the headquarters of the Skull and Bones Secret Society. The Duchess of Kent might be ashamed of her father having been a member of the SS but she might equally be keen to play down the fact that her husband, the Duke of Kent, is Britain's most senior royal Freemason. The Duke and Duchess of Kent live at Kensington Palace, which is home to the Royal Alpha Masonic Lodge. The Royal Alpha Lodge was established by the Duke of Sussex after he became Grand Master of United Grand Lodge in 1813. One of its most eminent members was the physician in ordinary to Queen Victoria, Sir William Gull, who Stephen Knight claims was responsible, along with several other eminent Freemasons, for the Jack the Ripper murders in Victorian London. Suitably, members of the Royal Alpha Lodge at Kensington Palace are called Princes of the Blood Royal. Secret societies across the planet proudly claim to have geniuses such as Mozart and Kings amongst their membership. But none of these secret societies allow their members to speak of the rituals which go on behind closed doors in palaces and government buildings around the world. The satanic rituals of Freemasonry have been practiced by several kings of England but all those questions sweep Freemasonry's darkest satanic secrets under a very plush carpet. One of the most influential secret societies spawned by the Bavarian Illuminati is the Order of the Golden Dawn. It was founded in 1887 by a Freemason, William Wynne Westcott, who claimed to have deciphered a coded alchemical script containing initiation rituals of a secret German occult order called Die Golden Dammerung. Westcott already had plenty of experience conducting occult rituals. In 1865, he had helped establish a Masonic order called the Societas Rosicruciana, inspired by the Jewish magic of the Hebrew Kabbalah. These rituals are still enacted at study group meetings at the United Grand Lodge in London. For many years, 
the Golden Dawn held its meetings at the London headquarters of the Mark Masons. The Golden Dawn was plagued with scandal as rival high-ranking Masons wrestled for control of this influential Victorian secret society. In 1891, Westcott lost control of the Golden Dawn to another high-ranking Freemason magician called McGregor Mathers. Together with the poet W.B. Yeats, they devised new magical rituals and initiated the senior members of Britain's aristocracy. In 1903, control of the Golden Dawn was yet again seized by another Freemason called A.E. Waite. The rituals of the Golden Dawn were similar to ancient witchcraft. At the Old Bailey in 1901, two Golden Dawn associates, Mr. and Mrs. Horos, were tried for rape. They had used the Golden Dawn initiation ceremony to beguile their teenage victims. The Golden Dawn was nothing more than Freemasonry with added semi-satanic and sexual mysteries. The Golden Dawn still survives to this day. In 1987, a conference was held in London to commemorate the centenary of the Golden Dawn's conception. The conference was organized by the Hermetic Research Trust, whose trustees include the Marquis of Northampton, who is a prominent Royal Arch Freemason.